You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Friends, we're here on Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall, and I am back with my uh, buddy, Tony Rodrigues, whose last name I got right this time. Thank Boom. you. You yes. made it look easy, Dan. I, I made it look easy. We, we, we messed it up twice. I but on the third day, <laughs> it's a resurrection. Look, man, um, I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today because I don't even know where we're going. But we are going to be picking up a conversation that is following two previous interviews on this podcast. Now, you have almost countless hours of interviews on the internet with different people and personalities and uh, friends that are listening to this podcast, you're welcome to search for those and find them. But today we are going to be picking up on a point in Tony's story. And if, and if you haven't seen his podcast on this channel, just go back and find those where he describes how he was pulled into a 20 and back in the secret space program. And in those two videos, we basically talked through his time on earth, his time, on the moon, Mars and, and and then moving into his uh, transportation to his role at the Ceres colony, which was Nazi camp on a dwarf planet. And in the context of this radical testimony, there is a, a point, and, and, and you talk about it in your book, which I have here for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, Ceres colony, Cavalier. Fun read. Um you talk about a point where you are taken not out of your physical body, but actually they transport your consciousness out of the clone body and send it somewhere else for 10 years. For an additional Earth. 10 years. Yes. I'm, it, like, like uh, what do they call the dolls? The Russian dolls where they open it. There's another doll. It was like that. And I, you know, they took me out of my life for 20 years. And I was, you know, basically labor and moved move from program to program. And then in one of these programs, they had come across an ET species that had the technology to take somebody in my capacity that was in a 20 year uh, career return program or 20 and back to some people and then take them again. And so what they're doing is they're stretching out and being able because labor is the name of the game. It still is, you know, in, among the world in the world labor Labor is a, the bulk of most costs of everything that you do. So it's a uh, very important commodity still. And uh, robots are robots can only do so much. Consciousness can drive so many things. It turns out that with cloning and with the advanced genetic technology that, um, that exists in the cosmos, that consciousness is a, actually a very valuable currency. And during that time, I was taken again in some... In, I, you know, this is the, I'm not talking about this in interviews. So as I do more interviews, like you said, I've done, I've done many, I've done hundreds of interviews and thousand hours plus. When you talk about the same things, I have the verbiage right there that I can talk about really quick. So I've never talked about this extra 10 years. I wanted it in the book. I, when we were writing the book, I, you know, there was a time when I thought just don't even, there's no need to, you know, it's a can of worms. But really what happened was something very spiritual happened to me on the, at the end of that time. Uh, there was a very, there was a very spiritual event. And I, for the sake of the book, the second book that I'm writing, that I'm working on, that we, is coming along very good, that it's due to be released in April of 23. So not too long from now. Um, the cover art's coming along and the book's coming along. For the sake of that, I'm not going to tell the reveal because there is kind of a reveal at the end of it. And I think that um, as I as I've been writing it, so I, those ten years, I put those in there, and my editor Jackie said, "Look, you you should make this your second book as a companion to your book. You know, you make people are going to want more." And lo and behold, that was the case. But a lot of people are very that are oh, I, I get contacted a lot. Like I loved your book, Tony. Thank you, and please write another. Please give more. And so. Um, 
as I'm writing the second book, what I'm finding out is because of that spiritual event that is a vague memory, not a clear memory like the first book, um, that the first book maybe end up being the companion to the second one. That the, the in, in, in terms of importance of what happened when I look back on it, like um, I'm definitely not going to have the, the page count. Uh, you know, we'll fill it out with some things, but it's going to be probably right in the ballpark, a little bit under what Cav series Calvin and Cavalier was. But the, the things that I witnessed and the, just the way that it ended up when I ended up before I got back to series at the end of that 10 years were very profound. And they were all, they were things that I always kind of carried with me that I always suspected played a part, played a role in the entire um the entire experience the whole 20 years like I, I always thought that what happened to me was kind of like I had a I had a you know a guardian angel over me and I think I still do I really I think I still do because you know the right people and the right things still continue to have knock on wood still still keep happening to me and um, you know for somebody that's talking about the things that I've done publicly some very dark things that are very relevant that, um, you know, somebody to say the things that I have and present the amount of evidence that I have is a dangerous thing, has, it has been a dangerous thing in the past. And so I got to feel that I've been blessed in many ways. And one of them is for me to be able to tell my story and, and maintain a bit of safety about it. So anyhow, the second book, um, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a tidbit if Dan, if, if that's what you're, I can see I can see the wheels turning. That's what it is. I can see you the same time you can see me, and I can see the wheels turning in there. I, oh, I'm excited about the 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 whole thing. And and and, and you know, one of one of the things that I was just like crossing my mind as you're talking. I have listeners that heard you on my program, friend, and said, I'm gonna pray for Tony. Hmm. You have people praying for you. That's right. That's very right. And I, it's a blessing. It's an absolute blessing. People come the last few conferences. I've had people come up to Tony. I've watched you and I just love you. And I, I just want, you know, they, they're very, and th we don't see it when, when you, when somebody's rude to you in life, you see on TV, how to respond rudely back, how to handle it. You see it. And you see in the media, when somebody's rude to you, you have a response that you learned on television somewhere. But we don't ever see on television people being honored. So we don't know. I don't have the response for it. Really, I what I do in person is because I don't have the words when somebody I'm so I'm so grateful for somebody for a stranger to come up to me and say, Tony, I, I followed your work. I read your book and I just love you. And, thank, you know, they say nice things to me. They say wonderful things. I don't know how to respond to that. So I just transition to a hug. Come here. Give me a hug. Because I can because that's what I, I can speak in energetically. You know, just I, I hug them. But it's really hard. It's really hard to have the words for that. But it is a, it's is an absolute blessing. I, I've been very lucky to have lived and witnessed that part in my life to have people uh, very being very supportive As, after what I went through. But um, you know, I'm older and got over a lot of it uh, for the most part. But to have that, it's like anyhow. So I don't know what to say exactly, but I do feel very blessed for the outpouring of of love that people have showed me um, online and in person. So, but the book, the second book, when they took us, what happened was the, yeah. series, the series Colony Corporation, their, their mission was technology, period. It was to acquire technology. They were aware that they were not the most advanced and they were trying, they're in a technology race with other colonies inside our solar system that are under the same umbrella of corporations. So that was their, that's their entire it's not to seek out new life and new civilization. That's not their mandate. So to that end, they came across a species from an, uh, another galaxy, from an extra galactic species that um, had the technology to take, they had the need. And they were trading a technology. I, and I don't even know what it was. I, I really don't. I don't know if it was knowledge or like math algorithm. I really don't know what they traded for it. But it was very lucrative to them, to the officers. After after the event happened, the officers said, look, we we did it. You know, we got it. We got paid very well from what, what happened. And I said, you can't do this. This is illegal. You can't tuck it. We're going to. And they said, no, no, they, they have the tech. They've got it solved. They've got it figured out. You're going to be fine. And what they did was they took their slave labor. They took their their workforce of slaves and plugged them in and gave them 
another, you know, bout of slave labor for them. And it was only in the blink of an eye. I was gone for 10 years, but I was back, you know, in an hour or a half hour or less than that, probably. Just, you know, they took me in and put me into a machine and there was a process and then I was gone. But th the thing they did was they put me in a non-human body. They put me in a much simpler vessel than a human. They put me in something that was, and I had the, I had the maturity of about a 13 year old. Like I had the mental capacity of a very young person, you know, emotionally and everything. Like it was a watered down version so that they needed less of it. And what I'm starting to think of it now, as I write the second book, I'm starting to think of it now that our consciousness, when I, and when people ask me about the technique, cause it's very confusing to explain to somebody that has no idea. And I say, it's like a beam of light. Like your consciousness is like a beam of light that's split off from a light. It's a like a beam. And what they did was they took half of the beam and diverted it to another vessel. And so I was half as bright each time. And then when the 20 years was over, that other vessel died and I got my light, my brightness back. And, my, and that's really what it felt like too. So in my life, like, you know, at the moment that I was taken ever after those next 20 years in my organic life here in Michigan, where I was living, my life was, was, was very turbulent. I didn't, I didn't have the state of frame of mind that I did when it was all over. There was a day 20 years later when it was all over and I woke up and went, wow, it's all over. And it was the same thing. Like, and, you know, I, I described it as water before, like a bucket of water. They took half the water, but I think it's more accurate to call it a beam of light. Mm -hmm. And so there's a light coming from somewhere that is our consciousness. And so they took half of that light and drove something else. And then they took a little bit of that and drove something else that was not required. That didn't require the conscious. That's what I mean. So when I, when they originally took me and my consciousness was split, both vessels were just as talented as each other. They were both, I was the exact same person. I was just as talented. I could learn things and do, you know, I was that. But that when they took me for the 10 years, the vessel they put me in was non-sexual, was non-ambitious, uh, was not educated, and just did a certain job for a project, for a very large project that I'm starting to find out from other whistleblowers is a universal technology, something that yeah. they do where the project is uh, something. So the ones that they ran it a little bit maybe unscrupulously the one that I was involved in and how they acquired it. Um, but when it was over, I, I appeared right back on Sirius Colony and walked out very confused and had very little memory of it. But I began to be visited from things that I think believe I'd met out there. And there, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of it's kind of the reveal. It's kind of kind of a reveal at the end. And it ties back to I think towards the end, a very spiritual thing, a very spiritual a very, um, you know, meaningful contact that I had. So, there was an incident that I had. So, okay, go ahead. I, I'm not on a rant. I, I Give it to me. No, you're doing, uh, you, you're saying it. Okay, so tracking with the story. I, I have some things to say, right? And, and I, so I'll probably insert a few things here, but this is what I hear. I hear that you were on series Colony already, so that you, you, you had gone through the moon, You've been with Mars and Mars Corp and the military over there doing what they had you doing. And then you got sent to series and on series, then you got pulled into this. They put you in a room, pulled out your consciousness, and then they put it in another body. Now, this is what I'm going to ask. Where was that body? It was in another galaxy. Well, what a big word and what a huge statement to say, but that body, it was as if they took the, they took it. And I don't know if they traveled, if, if there was a period of time, like if they put it somehow in a vessel or if there was an instant, how they did it. I don't know if there was a period of time that passed, but I woke up in another body and I know vaguely where it was. So the whirlpool galaxy is basically, there is a, Messier object that has two galaxies and it was the one behind it so it was we were it was known to us and it's visible from earth but it's, it was a, a region a galaxy that had been uh, not like like not formed all the way like when a galaxy is large enough 
a healthy galaxy, let's call it healthy, which for lack of a better term, I don't know. But your standard galaxy in its lifespan will turn, will make barred arms and make the spiral arms. Yes. So, and then it will eventually, you know, it turns into a disc. Um, this was a was a was a cloud of a galaxy that had irregular star formation. It had it had yes. the resources. It was a not a, it was not a fully formed galaxy, so the resources were not as predictable as it, um, as they are in other healthy more healthy galaxies. I I don't even want I don't even like that term. I really don't like that. So I think that's I think that's a complete misnomer. Other galaxies that are formed like the standard galaxy model is a spiraled or a barred galaxy like that's the standard uh, that what we observe in the observable universe this was a galaxy that's uh gosh i forget the term there is a term for it in astronomy i've seen but it was yeah. basically a ball basically all the stars spread out into a ball and all the resources were spread out like that so they had problems like that once so imagine imagine uh let's put it in terms of a society here on earth like a like a a society of a, a, a race of people or a group of people people that um lived on a continent that had great resources advanced in technology like you look at the europeans they were able to get steel and they started cutting their trees down and they, they went into the iron age but other um uh groups of people in the world did not have the resources so because the indians and in the americas didn't have the food resources or the farming they cha they had to move around and for their food so they were nomadic and they didn't really stay long enough to advance and learn steel and then you look at um, cultures on you know the islands like polynesia or the hawaiians they had no you know, really the technology was very hard for them to come by there was less of them and less resources so the so the same people the same intelligence the same everything all things being the same the ones that were in an area with great resources advanced in technology and that's our own history. And I believe that this went on in the cosmos and that that galaxy, because the resources were different, they were fighting to keep up with technology. They were fighting. They had to innovate in ways that pe that species in, in a regular shape, in a standard galaxy model, once they get to that level, once you get to that level of space travel, interstellar trade, and, and you know, there's a level of technology there that we're not there yet. Uh, I don't even think the secret space program is there yet. I'm talking about a level where the, everybody on the planet is interacting with everybody else on other planets. And so once they got to that level, they were they were deficient in many ways and they were trying to be innovative and figure out ways to do it. And so that's why they came and when the series colony corporation, however, made contact with them and said, hey, what do you guys got? There was a resource that they needed and that resource was consciousness um, that was cleared to be traded for such a for for and it wasn't a horrible existence it was actually less horrible than what i was already living on series colony so i had um you know uh, a measure of you know a measure of a lifestyle that was slightly better than what i was living as a slave on series colony corp in those years and this would have been so when i look back on it this would have been probably like in the early 90s and our timeline in the time that this is about when it took place, 1794 ish, 90, 92 so, to 96. So we're, we're, we're going to go deeper in this. Now, I just have to say a few things. Now, number one, um, this is not the first time I'm hearing something like this. Personally, really? No. Really? Well, of course not. And even on this podcast, I had a guest a couple of years ago. And he had autism and his testimony was that he was delivered of autism. And he, this gentleman is actually from Australia and he, while he was in, in, in his autism, he would sometimes for lack of better words, trance out. And when he would do that, he would be in his other body that would be in space. And that other body was reptilian in nature. And he'd be in that body doing, th and he kind of thought, well, maybe I'm just having a fantastic imagination, but it, it was very, very real. And he'd be 
tranced out, just totally dissociated here. And then he'd come back here and he'd be in his normal human body. And he described that on this podcast. And I know that this is something that, that happens where there's a trade and you're calling it consciousness. And I would, I would also call it soul is Mm -hmm. being sent around and that, that, that can go very far. And so you, you have your consciousness being sent to another galaxy because there's a trade you're the goods and being put in another body. I, I think it's so interesting that you said that existence was actually not as bad as what they were putting you on in the series. So how awful. Wow. That's a big statement. Tell me more about this body, this non-sexual body that it parked you at a 13 year old mental development or whatever. I mean, explain that. You know, so I'm saying that I'm going, I'm saying that to describe the experience, like, you know, it was a less, it, it was, it was as if, yeah, I mean, you, you know how it is. If we're all, if we're adults and people, people listening to this and no offense, kids, really no offense to any young people that are listening to this, but there's a stage of development where as you get older, you're mentally going to, things are going to clarify, things are going to clear. And, um, looking back on my life, that's what that, that existence was like. It was as if I was a teen, an early teen, you know, mentally. And that's, I had that kind of thought process. Those, you know, there's a, there's a thought process that like a young boy has, that's different than a grown man or a, or a man in his twenties. Like, you know, there's a thought process when they, they, they solve because they see things in a different way. And it was just like that. (laughs) I was a dark, charcoalish maybe um color and there were other beings the same the same there were taller ones that were kind of in command and then we were we were working on um on our pro i don't want to say too much you know what i mean because the other thing is is there's there's been a bit of plagiarism in the community lately and um so i'm keeping a lot of the story thing i'm keeping a lot of the things that may be supporting evidence close to my chest because somebody will get wind of it and it's immediately in their book and it's published and boom, and, you know, so it happened. I'm looking back at things I said on YouTube five years ago. And when I look back at when other people said it, there was a, there was a bit of fair amount of plagiarism. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of it that goes on. So that's the only reason I'm not sharing a lot of the details. That's and I'm just more so than unfortunate. Happy. Wow. Yeah. And I'm more than happy to come back when the book comes out and tell you and dump dump the whole goods. So okay. I, I definitely would would love to do that because I I really I really like you guys and um, <laughs> I I really love being on your show. So, um, but that being said, it was a simpler it was a simpler existence, and it was uh, I don't know I think it was three fingers and a thumb, maybe two and a thumb, three and a thumb. And like I said, the other reason that I've never really covered this material in a lot of other <clears throat> interviews, in fact, every interview I've ever done, I've never really touched on this. Just because the memories are more vague. So if to talk, so for me to talk about this time against somebody that's very skeptical and get a high speed back and forth, I really don't have um, the picture, a clear picture, like I do the time on series or on Mar, you know, the, the 20 years that I did, I have a very clear picture, very good memories of that. So I can kind of defend myself when somebody's skeptical and they come with cross referencing questions, but <clears throat> this 10 years, it's, it's very vague. It's very hard to write for that reason. It's easier to write because I didn't get the abuse. When I was writing series colony, uh, series colony Cavalier, I was reliving the abuse as I wrote about it. It was very painful very difficult to write this 10 years wasn't that abusive in the, in that in those ways there was abuse but it was a different kind you know like as a as a worker for a you know i guess a um you know mismanaged <clears throat> for i was a worker under mismanagement basically that was the form of abuse so there was a bit of mismanagement over the resources and but um it really wasn't that bad of an experience so looking back on it but it was very lonely. It was a lonely existence. We were separated from, and we were kept away from the general population of the rest of the beings that we were part of. 
for that reason, because we were guests, lab, guest labor. And so they kept us separated from everybody. And there was a, there was a, there was an amount of loneliness about it. So they pacified us. We had video games. That was, we had video games. So that's, do you think about that? If you, so think about taking a consciousness and making a labor force from consciousness that you're paying, you're giving information to another species. And then you put them in a genetically built body that's stuck at 13 years old. And you put them in their room and you just give them video games. And then they come out of the room and do their work, do their job, what they're going to, what they, what you built them to do very well, I might add. And so when you, when you when you think about like that, when you think about a system like that, it's actually very effective, very, very cost effective and, and um, whatever, very, very productive. It was very productive. So that was kind of what the existence was like. And a lot of us, uh, what happened was a lot of kids. And uh, so, and I say this in the book and, and my editor struck, struck the line from the book. And this is a point, and I think we talked about this in one of our previous um, shows, was at the very end of that, if you read in the book, I forget what, it's like 117 page. I don't, I've got a book around here somewhere. It's like 117 or 119. I, 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 I can fact check you. I'll, I'll Please look do. up 117. Yeah. Um, but at the end of that, I wanted to say, you know, it says kind of like, but that's another story. I, I think it's right in there. I it, it it on 117 of your book, you were talking about um, Peggy and Jeremy. Nope. So that's not it. So it's farther on. It's way okay. farther than that. That's still in Seattle. Yep. Huh. That's I'm okay. Not reach, I'm not in reach of it. Anyhow, I want to say this, that... At the end of that, it said, but that is another story. And it left it open for the second book. I did that on purpose. But the line that I, I remember wanted, that part. Yeah, I because I name, was like, if I can interview this guy, I'm going to ask the question. This. I'm going to get this. Well, you're the first one, I think. I don't think I've told anybody else about it. I've said it in a few like live uh, Q&As. I've talked about it briefly, but not this much. Not this long. But I wanted to name the entire chapter. What does the devil steal? And she wouldn't let me. My editor fought me. She held her ground on it. And I let her. And I I capitulated. But I wanted to name the chapter. Because what does the devil steal? He steals your soul. I was hoping you were going to say. We agree. Well, we're, talking, we're talking about the technology to take your soul do you understand what what I, I I put that together? I said, look, this when you look back at lore, when you look back at the religious lore in history, that does there's a lot about the devil, the, uh, you know, in the Old Testament that just doesn't make sense. And hell, going to hell, you're going to go to hell, right? You're going to go and and for for I think eternity is a long time, but when you look at it, and then now we're talking about now I'm bringing to light this technology where they're taking I call it, you can call it whatever you want, like chi soul consciousness awareness it's all the same it's all the spark of life whatever you want to call it you know we can call it we can call it fred we all have fred um but if you look back in lore and you see what it says not only in the bible but in all the texts that well, there's a being that comes and takes your soul and and in the in in and this is one of the things that i because i did a whole like I, I've done so much on this subject, right? Because it, that's what I do, right? We, we are in the business of getting people's souls redeemed and put back together in the name of Jesus. Like that's what I do. And and so, but but what we've found in the course of ministry and I'm trying to help people is that we're pulling people's soul parts back from all over the cosmos, which makes me in, uniquely interested in your information because you're explaining the experience of what soul is going through in these places that people cannot connect to because they're it's blocked i mean it's just locked down but we're still <clears throat> dealing with and i and i take it back to this you know in the book of revelation and it, it's talking about babylon like as a spiritual kingdom and government and all this stuff it says it trades in the bodies and souls of men right ba babylon that's like you know wow. and <clears throat> 
Look, uh, there I, I call it the cosmic soul trade. And I was calling it the cosmic soul trade before I met you. And I was like, this guy, he has the keys. Like, this is what I've been looking at for years. And you're, you come out, like, yeah, I was on series colony and they put me up there. I pulled me out of my bio. And put me right back. And, and you know play. what? I've talked, sat down with several other people, Germans, some of them. And when we've brought up series colony, secret space program, like, they are there now like that is so accurate like what and, and that's one of the reasons why i think people are triggering and, and and being attracted to your information because they're resonating on something that affects their lives too they, because these projects go far and wide they, they, they are vast yes i did um preliminary math and just just on the logistics i one time i sat and kind of real quick on a piece of paper and I'm going to butcher the numbers or because it was, it was num something I didn't care about. I just wanted to see like realistically how many people could they take, right? Like realistically, logistically, how many, because it's not all of us, there's a genetic factor involved. So not everybody can go for one, for, for the technology, there is actually a genetic threshold. So it's, not everybody has the genetic, which is why we're seeing it generational. We're seeing this this happen to parents and their kids and their grandkids because the genetics to go, once you go into the program, they know that your kids have a high probability of having the correct genet genetics. They don't got to go look for it. So, but I did a quick, I did a quick thing and I, I based it on what I saw. Four, four guys, <clears throat> four man crew, a doctor, and then a two man or three man crew of security that only worked for a few minutes. So one of them could go every 15 minutes and the four man crew worked with me and I gave them four hours on total of what I remember of the process in and out. And so once you're in, they, they cut you loose and the other programs take you. So you go into, you know, you go to school and then go on to work. And then when you come back out, there's another two hour process or what, or there's another process and then they put you back. So I looked at that realistically, the manpower, and these are eight, these are ETs. So calling them men is, is a misnomer. But the manpower it would take and how if they really were cranking and you take a base on the back side of the moon, the size of the Pentagon, just one, you know, or a good mall, like a shopping mall size. And you pack it with these offices. I was in a basically like a doctor's office and I went to two or three other places in the building, um, you know, during the process, the intake process. And quickly I got into the half million a month. And uh, so that's uh you know whatever six million a year over a hundred years is you know six billion was six hundred million people or six whatever like I said I'll butcher the numbers talking about it but quickly when you do a four man crew two a day and then you fill a building one building the size of the Pentagon or a hospital size building which is not very big you know and then put many stories so put a few you know five hundred thousand of them you can get into really high numbers really fast and so the reality of this is that it's probably very widespread and it's happening to a great deal of people. Like you said, you're dealing with people that it resonates with people. Read. My book is still selling. It's coming up on a year and it's selling very well. And so it's not, and it's not because I'm paying for commercials because I'm not. And uh, the thing is people read it and the, the I get feedback and people read it and go, man, I read your book and I couldn't believe it because I, I knew it all along. And I had to tell my my dad about it. And I bought him a copy. And I had to tell my sister about it. I bought her a copy. And then she read it. And her husband started crying when he read it. And so people are reading it and getting their head around something that they kind of already knew that they may have experienced or they may have witnessed experience. And then it opens their mind. And they go, that's exactly, that was the same thing that I went through in the beginning when I heard it on, from Randy Kramer's info. I went, oh my God, that, that's what happened to me. And, uh, you know, when I, when I got the, something that really justified the memories, you know, I got an okay to remember. And so people are getting this information. And so that's what I mean. The, the, the reason they, the, the, the main tool to get away with it, the main tool is not, is not space flight or laser beams or teleporters. The main technology that they're doing this with is secrecy. Wow. That's the tech. That's that's the magic sauce, and so that's where I'm at right now um, with telling the story. While I I really believe in telling the story and letting people know, even though 
I, I take my lumps, you know, like, you know what it's like. I take my lumps from people that are very, very skeptical. People that have had no, the people without the genetics, maybe, <laughs> but people that have had no experience. So it just doesn't make sense if it's not in your reality. You had no experience, never saw a UFO, you never had anything. So you read the book, just like, man, that's crazy. There's no way. So those people, I tend to get attacked and I get lumps, but I've also had some official pushback. So that mm -hmm. means that I'm doing something right. So mm. if if a letter agency or if I get somebody that's actually got it's very good at pushing back, then I know I'm doing something right and I take it as flattery, even though I've been and I'm not gonna get I don't gonna waste half your show talking about how that goes. Talking about negative, you know, I don't want to bellyache on your show. We have so many better things we can do. But I'm saying that when that does happen, I take it as flattery. Brilliant. So let's come back to this point that you made that's just I, I'm I'm still hanging hanging on this point you were playing video games in a non-human body in another galaxy between work shifts wow i mean that is a bomb drop if i've ever heard one this is amazing so Tell us a little bit more about the environment. So it was isolated. Does that mean that, like, for these rooms, for instance, were you by yourself, or did you have a roommate? Yes. No, I had I had my own room. We did not have water, so the shower was a sonic, like a there was a beam. So I had to shower, and, and when you went in the shower, it was a, like an ultrasonic. And there, it was like a sand, like the soap was a sandy thing and you'd scrub it. And that's why this body was like, had very little water that it had. And uh, there was actually, it gave the food wasn't great, but the food, the room I was in had a screen and it had it like an inner, the inner, there was a, there was an interface that would plug into me directly. And that's how I'd interface with the computer system. And the screen, there was an AI that told me what to do. There was an AI that said, um, stop like i there were times when i threw tantrums and i started kicking things and it came on the ai would come on and say stop stop what you're doing and i would say no i want to talk to somebody and you know i threw a tantrum and uh it would say stop or you'll be disciplined blah 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 and then there was a light that came on that was irritating it was it was a punishment the light would come on it was like a like a bright ultraviolet light and it hurt lightly it you know not 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 a stinging pain but like a dull irritating pain on your skin wherever the light touched you and i've tried to be clever and kind of shy but you couldn't get away from it and so i you would uh, you would end up capitulating and say now lay down on the bed and it would tell you what to do until you went to sleep and so there was an ai there so on days and then days after that i'd lose my privileges when i when i there was a menu you know there was news and and like um What's the word? Instruction instructional videos that you could watch. There was a menu on the screen in the in my computer that I had. It was a small, like a one bedroom, little studio, you know, uh, just a bed and a little, a very small place, almost like the Fifth Element. So I, it was a lot like the Bruce Willis's apartment in the Fifth Element. Not not that it did look much different than that. It looked much different than that, but about that size. But um, there was an AI that basically took care of us, that told us, okay, it's time to get up, get dressed, hurry up and get dressed or you'll get the light. You know what I mean? Like you did, you did what you were told. So, but when you were good, so when you hit the numbers and when we were good, it would reward you. And then the entertainment menu would have things that popped up in the, and then you could click on, you could go to those and they were games. And so you got rewarded for good behavior and you got punished for bad behavior. You would get time out. So and the games, there were certain games that were just like what we have today that were multiplayer, but you were actually, they were more immersive. They were multiplayer and they set it up to where people could only, and I'll call them people because they were all ETs of this. And they were not always, on, so it, it was a base that was basically essentially in a large asteroid is where I was living. So and it wasn't a, a planet. planet. No. Okay. And so it was in a nebula in that wow. place. But there were people in these games on certain of certain game when you got really high access and you did good for a long time the repeat the, you were playing games with people that were on planets or other bases very far away that was a it was the network and they made it to where you could only communicate three or four words at a time in order to for security 
So you could only say it, it was very, it was very, you could only say, hi, how's it going? I'm good. You know, and, I, and so you would communicate and you'd get to know people through actions and you'd get friends that you'd come back the next night, they'd be there and you would develop, you know what I mean? Online, like video game relationships. But over time, we were able to get a lot of information back and forth to each other. So where are you from? Oops, got to go. And then I'm from here the next day, you know, like they, 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 they deeply regulated communication, but we, over time, if you were good for a long time and uh, you, there was a version of popularity, I guess we got to glean, we got to figure out what we were doing. And with that, I saw that the actual, that, not only from that, but from the command, we were getting briefings too for our missions, what we were doing, the days that, and you would see kind of, if you've ever worked for a company that was unraveling, they don't tell the workers that the company is unraveling. They try, okay, everything's just fine. We're going to have your paychecks. They're all there. Even though there's no money in the bank account, they still want you to keep working until Friday. You understand like that, that kind of, um, that kind of thing, those kind of things were, were starting to be obvious to us as we were working that they, it was unraveling at the top and um, whatever. Uh, it's funny because wow, I, I said all this, so it's not, I, it's sadly, I, I, I wasn't on the record. So Jackie Kenner, my editor is the only other person. And I've spoken some of it with Elena Denon, if you know who that is. <clears throat> know the gist of the story beyond what I'm telling you, like the actual, how it's going to end. And uh, I spoke with Jackie maybe two years ago about it, but we're starting to see things come out. Like we're starting to see stories in Hollywood come out, the Andor story. They are starting to see kind of the same story that's coming out that of what I'm about to write. That is, but you know, I went on the record, I have a witness in Jackie, but I didn't really, I should have written it much sooner. Um, but I didn't, you know, like I had my hands full with my book. I just finished, it hasn't even been a year since Series Colony has been out. So I, um, I always was doing interviews and I trusted that doing things like this, were going to do the job that we're, this was going to be my historical account. I've done all these videos. And what I found is that they disappear. It's very easily for videos to come, to come online and to be deleted. And I went, oh, no. And that's kind of when I wrote, you know, got uh, motivated to do the book. And and because because of the fanfare of the first book, now I'm really motivated for the second one because people have been so good to me about the first <laughs> book, you know. So, 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 yeah, it, yeah. Well, these things happen, don't they? You know, I, I'll tell you what. Um, people do borrow I want to ask this next question. All right. So what was the project 10 years? Is that one of the things that you can't disclose to us yet? I just can't give it to you yet, man. I'm so sorry. Can't give it to me. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, so do you have any idea regarding the architect of the network how do you, you think they create an interplanetary network of communication that they were plugging into and so it, yeah, yeah so i can't tell you the i will say this that the experience um Again, so this is the first time I've ever spoken to this in interview. So I don't have the verbiage just on cue. Yes. So I've got to, I've got to set this right. So I've got Walk to be out. right about this, but I've got to work this out. You guys are seeing me, you know, do this. It, this is how I this is actually how more how I really talk. You know, after I after I do interviews and talk after the book comes out, I'll do 20 interviews and I'll have all this really quick. I'll be fast with it. But um the things I remember from that time, it's like it's a, there's I, obviously there's a great deal I don't remember. The things I do remember are losing the faith in what was essentially my my parents of that in that existence. The people that were ahead of the people that were in charge of me, there were there were people that were had the role of authority. They were my parents, and it, the, in this case, it was a government like 
like a form of government or a form of it wasn't really militarized we were we were doing construction we were building big things um and beginning to lose my faith in them was what i remember was the terrifying thing was the that's that's what i remember the most is that it's that there was a point when i went oh they don't really care about me they don't care what and, and they're in kind of in deep shit pardon my language but you know they're kind of in I could tell that they had big problems. Like there was, there was a time, like I, I clipped on for five or six, seven years, seven years into the project and everything was fine. And I got good at what I was doing and I earned my, I got good. I didn't get disciplined. I, I, I got it together and was doing good. Right. So I was in a place where I was being very productive and I was, they expected me to do something and it was, it became easy for me to do what they expected. And then it kind of unraveled on their end and I started to witness it. And because I had been good, you know, because I had been somebody that was performing, that was good. I I had, I was inside, I was, I was inside, I was sitting, you know what I mean? Like I was in a position to where I could see things unravel and I went, Whoa, not only do they not care about me, but they're in deep trouble and who's in charge of them. Does not care about them either? I, I saw that happen. And that's what I remember the clearest. That's mm. what that's what I remember the most of this time of what was going on there. So those are, that's the memories that you know the every day to day stuff I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, um, I can compare those memories to what we live in now. And they were telling us a bunch of lies. They were telling us that they were one. They were like a, uh, I don't have the word, the word empire isn't right. They were one uh, organization that had either uh, made allies with, allied with, treated, or um, occupied most of the galaxy that they were in. That there was one, basically one big organization. They had peace. That it wasn't, they were not, they were, they were telling us that everything was fine, that, you know, that they were taken care of and that that galaxy was at peace. The lie they told us was that they couldn't go to the next galaxy, which was fairly nearby in terms of distance. And they were trying to manufacture like that people in the next galaxy are a threat. And we need to get all these things built because if they get here, we already have some of them get here and they're very mean towards us. They're, they're very uh, hawkish towards us and they're a threat. We're in danger from the beings that live in the galaxy next door, which was in close proximity. This was something they were systematically, you know, lying to us about. And I, now that I look back on it, after I look back on it, like in my life, when I got my memory recall after 2015, and I looked back at that, I really thought that is similar to the lies that we get. Don't the Russians are bad. They're going to get you. Remember all the whole cold war. Oh yeah. The Russians are bad during the cold war. During the Cold War, the Russians were not being told that America was going to get them. The Russians were being told that the Germans were going to get them. I talked to a friend that was grew up in Russia, you know, and I said, what was it like during the Cold War? I asked him, well, what was it like? Were you scared of America? He said, we loved America. We heard, we wanted, we loved your movies. We loved, we wanted all wanted to come to America. I said, you didn't hate us? You didn't tell you we were going to nuke you? I said, no. That was, he's like, no. He's like, we were ready to fight Germany. They said Germany was going to attack us. That's what, that's the Cold War. During the Cold War, the Russians thought Germans were going to attack them. They were ready to fight. They were being programmed to war against Germany, and we were being programmed to war against them. That's the fear lie, the fear lying that goes on for probably many different reasons. And it could be a thread of truth in there. Who knows? But in this situation, when I was out there, they were lying to us because I was purchased from another galaxy. So I knew that galactic travel was possible, but they were telling us that it was impossible to leave the galaxy. That was the, that's what I'm saying. Like in the nets and the computer, like the official, the official thing dogma that we were being taught was that we you know, we couldn't leave that galaxy. And but the other galaxy had beings that could get to us, and we were in, in fact in danger. And so that was their control mechanism. Like there, that was their version of lie, that lie. And that's something that I remember. That's like a mechanism of that society that I remember that that was, you know, that far away that they were still using propaganda to control people in that way. And a fear, a fear-based propaganda. Amazing. 
Amazing. They're using fear-based propaganda to control a community of people's consciousness habitating alternate bodies. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, well, there's, I don't think we were the standard. That's the thing. I think the project that I was in, I think the we were building a macro. Um, we were on a project to build something very, very big. Mm -hmm. And I think that it began something that took many years to do. And it, it, we're talking about 100 years, maybe mm -hmm. 200 years of a project. And I think that it got behind. Mm. And to, like, that was another thing that they didn't tell. We told us that we were behind, that we were doing bad. When it come to find out that the management were actually decades behind where they Whoa. were supposed to be. And so we found that was one of the things that I discovered over time, but talking to other people elsewhere that were talking about the project in these, you know, during the communication. And um, so that's what I think why they were desperate and bought the consciousness. They, they, they sought out additional labor. It was maybe quicker to clone up a, a something, a body. Maybe this technology was quicker for them. I don't know really a lot of the logistics about it, but I think that they were desperate and that's why they resorted to buying, to having me there, to how I ended up there. I don't think it was the norm. I don't think that my existence there was the norm. And I think that that's why we were so isolated from everybody else. Wow. We were an extending, you know, we, we were, imagine a, imagine a giant nebula that is getting built, turned into something. And so you can have areas of it. I mean, we're talking about, and we're talking about light, light years in distance. So you can have actually, there's millions and millions of personnel that are working that have no, that can, that's a big enough area. They can have no contact with each other ever. Sure. Millions of people. And so they were falling behind and they needed more, more, more hands. And so they just used this tech. Now I'm going to ask another question. Right. So you were essentially a slave that was sold because yes. you were a slave to series colony and you were sold to this project. So usually if there's a trade, you, you know, not only did this group get you, but series colony got something. Mm -hmm. What I, were they getting? So they were getting, it was knowledge. It was a technology, but they were getting it in the form of like a book. Like they were getting a volume of, uh, and I'm saying I'm, it wasn't books. It wasn't a physical book. But imagine they were getting a uh, hundred volumes of, of books of technical data or scientific information from a species that was advanced in that kind of information. They're from a, a different star forming region. So they have privy to other, they had to, they had to innovate in different ways. So they had tech, not, they had knowledge that was different. And so they said that they were getting, that they had their eye. So when I was being walked and briefed, especially after it was over, but when I was getting walked in and briefed, they said, this is a sweet deal for us. The guy, the guys that were walking me to the hallway said, this is a sweet deal for us. Cause even if we get even half of it, we're going to be way ahead of everybody. This is going to put us way ahead of where we were. These guys have a lot of info and they don't really value it for what it is. Like, in other words, they were saying that it was cheap compared to to get this kind of technology and trade us to go do 10 years and back, you know, or however many guys it was, a hundred guys or a few hundred thousand guys, who knows, um, that it was cheap for the for the amount of tech. And they said, um, we just, there's only a few things that they know that we want, but we're not gonna tell them that because they'll charge us more. So we're getting this whole body of work and we hope that we get that far to where we get it, we just don't know. And they it was very, it was in the very beginning of the project of, of it all happening. When I came back, it had been, they canceled it. And um, they said, no, we didn't, the deal's over with. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I said, are you guys going to keep doing this for the whole 10,000 guys or whatever it is? They said, no, we, uh, it didn't work out. Uh, we're not really great for the technology, but we got what we wanted. And they were, they were very happy. It was a complete success as far as Series Colony Corporation was concerned. That, um, you know, I imagine out of a volume of 100 books, they only wanted really two of the books. And so they didn't know where they were going to come. And during the payment, like every month they got paid a book and then they gave this many, this many souls or this many heads 
and then they got their book and that was how the deal was set up structured and they got far enough to where they got the two books they wanted and then the and then they car tried to keep going and then it canceled it, the, you know they had they canceled it i'll explain all that i um like i said i i'm i'm, I'm treading i'm treading lightly with you and it's not that i don't it's not that I don't want to share with you, brother. No, I get it. You got a book coming out in April. So you're dropping breadcrumbs. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to sell some books. And I, I mean, I get it. I get it. It's, it it's a great strategy. Plus, well, you're trying to, you know, avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism. That's mm -hmm. well, I'm afraid of that. Some of that happened in the beginning with my with interviews. Uh, and like I said, rather than sit bellyache about negative things, and not only that, but it's happened to other people. So some of my friends that they have books too that wrote there's a very they're in in my genre in the secret space program whistleblower or witness genre if that's what you want to call it whatever <laughs> <clears throat> not only are we telling things that are very hard to believe based on ufology we're telling things that are very important that people don't realize people just look at it as a, ufology and it's fringe and it's woo or whatever it's just like learning how to meditate or whatever no we're actually giving away somebody's national secrets right so it's very dangerous and there's an entirely highly advanced industry around stealing them from us to make us look less credible and what i've learned over time there's, that's what i've learned over time is that others have had their books outright stolen from them and then all of and you see and Mm -hmm. I'm biting my tongue here, but you realize that the people that are doing the stealing have access to incredible technology that we don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis. So like you might think that somebody stealing something has a hidden camera or has a, can hack your email. I'm talking about people that can travel time. Well, I just got that... done doing two parts with a fifth generation super soldier who worked with the time bureau. Right. Right. So you get what I'm saying, though. I'm saying, and, and I understand you. You know what you know what I'm talking about, Dan. But I mean, to the listener or the person that's watching this, I just want to, I just want to say that um, it is a problem. It is something that that, and I and I don't have many more books like this in me. So I'm, I, you know what I mean. Like I'm getting the whole story out, and this one has a, like I said, a fair, a fairly, I think, a fairly profound spiritual uh, reveal at the end of it. And I think the reason, the reason that I'm so, um, I'm talking it up for one. And I don't really, uh, you know, selling books is one thing. Like I could, I could write a pamphlet of, at this point on the, cause I'm hot on the trail of series colony vocabulary. I could write a piece of garbage and it'll sell for the first three 90 days, you know, like it'll sell until the reviews tear it apart. <laughs> so right so anything i put out is right. if I'm, I'm not really thinking about the the dollars and cents of it or really i'm not you know I, I i i won't do that like the next book is just as like i said it's just as profound to me as series colony cavalier and i believe in the mission that this like i said this is something that i i'm hoping and i don't know people I, it might not be re 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 received people might go ah it's hard to believe that tony but I'm thinking that if I do this right, and I haven't wrote the end of it yet, but if I get the end of it written right, it's going to make people see themselves in a different light because we have certainly been lied to about what we really are, about our real true power of what we really are. And I, I just want the people to know that after what I'm going to start crying. I want people to know that after what I went through and what I discovered at that point was that each and every one of us is far more significant than what we've lived and led to believe. Very much so, like in a very big way, in a in, like on off the chart. There is not a chart. There is not an acronym or a, or a metaphor that I could give you that would do it justice. Like you are far more important than what you think you are. And that's why there's an entire apparatus. That's why the entirety of all of our civilization is geared around taking that from you. Mm. because you're that powerful so that is what that is the gist of the, that's what i'm saying now you see that series colony cavalier is i thought it was the main book and this was going to be the companion when i think that when when i'm looking at it because now i'm stepping back before it was just in my mind right like you remember you like 
you remember when you were young and you went to you went to school you went to took that class in college you didn't understand how important it was and now that you're grown up you go oh wow that was pretty important i'm glad i that wow that turns out that that was very important that i did that and so that's kind of what i'm going through writing the second book is i'm realizing that that was probably the whole reason for the whole thing for the whole why i remember and why i've been outwardly blessed with the experience of you know what i mean like ultimately what was a bad experience has turned into something that was a, that has meaning you know there's a lot that i would like to say in response to some of these things because well i i mean <laughs> i've made the same long line for a while now uh it, it it's a big picture and look and okay, so I'm coming at everything from a Christian perspective, right? When when you read Genesis one and you see, okay, God created man in His image, like I think, I think that that made the cosmic community jealous. Like um, the neighbors, yeah. You mean like people up there? And, and because yeah. I have a, 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 you know, my my, my cosmology includes what I would call pre-Adamic activity. And and so I think that there's there's a lot. And, and I, that's because I've been working with people that have been defecting from the Illuminati and certain bloodlines for a long time. And all of these bloodlines seem to, can I, yeah, I'm actually going to tell you the, the story, you know, and for my listening audience, I mean, you know, half of them were there for this, right? So we did a, um, this a, a, we call it the Bride Tribe Advance, but we did this meeting. And um you know so 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 we're preaching jesus and all this stuff and worshiping and waving our flags and stuff having a good time and and it's a big party and 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 it, but there was a build up and and at the, the closing session of that that conference i did a like a massive prayer of deliverance and 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 the the target was what i call root races of the illuminati because i had begun to map with all of the clients that i work with different groups that all pre-exist Adam and who were all in this conspiracy against who I believe God is, Jesus, and, and using the human vessel as their tool of attack. So we're going to invade the genetics with ours, pirate the dominion and harvest from the image and and use that and 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 because we have the goods i mean the trades are like endless and so we did we did and and i will tell you the results were off the charts and um, the testimonies were quite extraordinary and i did i, I mapped 13 races plus those in league with them it's, it's an it's an, it's an interesting list and you know i'll give you some of the names because that you might ping um from some of the other stories you've heard uh because one of the groups happened to be the pleiadians and another group happened to be the azurites mm. And 11 more. So, you know, I I see you making a face right now. No, the I'm like, wow, that sounds familiar, but I'm trying to think of where, where from. I have a hard time with names, but go on, keep going, please. No, this is because I was supposed to be interviewing you. So now I'm going to flip the tables, but you know, but you're saying stuff and, 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 We'll just have to look forward to the book. I'm, I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to reveal about that section of your story today, because we can, we could park it. And wait. yes, you've got the most out of me on on that subject than anybody ever has. This, so this is the most I've talked about the second book publicly in any public forum, and so uh, you got a lot out of it. So that's great. A lot of the things I'm talking about haven't been written yet. Wow. So I'm in the in the process of it, and. Um, well, folks, I will. Um, I will keep you posted for sure. <laughs> we are blessed. So we get back to series colony. All right, and and it is over. Now it, you you unfortunately were at the front of the line apparently because there were people behind you that didn't even have to do this. Yeah, that's messed up. 
Right. So exactly. So I was in the beginning of the project. So um, when I got back, um, a few hours had passed, uh, 45 minutes maybe till now I'm trying to, um, but I came back off the table and they ask, and I was very disoriented. I was sick to my stomach. I was, uh, had a hard time talking. Like I was totally disoriented, like as if I had came out of, I was in a bad way. And they walked me to, a, uh, they took me out of that room and they walked me to another place, like down the hall to another room. And I got a quick medical checkup from humans. So in that room were these beings and humans and that they were putting us through the process. They had their equipment set up and then they walked us to another room down and I got a quick medical checkup. And then I was just taken back to my bed and went to sleep. And I um, woke up and had to go to work the next day. I had to get up and, and go right back to my job that I hated the next day. And it was, there was a very, it was very disorienting still. So I had no really memory of what was going on, but in a short time and perhaps a month or so after this, and I did not say this in the book and I'm kind of just not realizing it as we talk about it, because that's how, that's how memory works is, uh, I started having very, very, um, very profound dreams of being visited by a being. So I was being like, as I slept, I always had the same reoccurring dream on series colony. Like when you're not on earth, it turns out <clears throat> that all the people in the colonies are aware of this, but when you're on Mars or another planet and you're sleeping, your dreams are different. The experience of dreaming is different. Wow. And, uh, the, the reoccurring dream that I always had, I think we talked about this before too, was that the, I would always go to sleep in my bed. I had a, like a small room that I was in, like in a, it looked, looked like a prison and no bars, but um, it was like, uh, what do you call it? Cinder block walls. It was very, it was not fancy. It was not shiny. It was concrete. And, <clears throat> but uh, I would go to sleep and I had the sensation of the floor falling away, disappearing and me falling out into space and actually out, like, sleeping and astrally floating in space and seeing either sometimes I would see series or sometimes I would just be out and see nothing. And then whatever, whatever abstract dream that I was going to have would begin. So the dreams began that way where I would go out into space. And so there were times when after this instance, where I would go, I would dream and I'd go out into space and there would be contact. There would be a friend there saying, you know, and then you it's just like dreams, you know, how you know, dreams like you have this great time and this conversation when you wake up, you forget what you said. I knew I was there. What happened? What was I just saying? And it goes away. It's on purpose. And uh, so that was the experience. And that began to happen. That began to happen after. A kind of, I don't want to say on a regular basis, but on, on a pretty regular basis that for a short time that began to happen after this incident on series. And then and then it went into the rest of the book. So that was. That was that. And then there's a couple, there's one scene from the beginning of the book that will tie in at the very end of the last book. So ultimately, the first two or three chapters, there's a scene in there that will come out of the, that there'll be, it'll be rewritten from the, at the end of this next book. That looks, hope it makes sense. I hope I'm not talking too cryptically here, but um, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, but uh, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out because I mean, you know, April isn't but that far away. That's right. It's very. It's not going to be long, and the editing process. You know, the other thing is on this this book, I've had a lot of people step up and volunteer to help, like with editing. There's a lot of people that are behind me. Whereas the first book was like, you know, I did have, I did have, I had all the support I needed. I was absolutely blessed. The people got a hold of me and said, Tony, do you need help? And I was like, actually, yes, I do. And I had all the support I needed. And Jackie Kenner and Andalara, who's an amazing person, very gifted, very, very righteous soul. And then Jackie Kenner, who is a very gifted person, editor, very amazing woman, um, really, really carried it. You know, they did a lot of work on the on that book. Uh this book, yeah, I've got a whole nother cast of people that are willing to help out. And like, I'm getting like artists that are helping. So um, 
there's another, it's almost like a better, bigger crew of people that are helping with the editing. And so I expect it to go much quicker once we get the original transcript done. So it's going to happen easier. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, Tony, this has really been good. I, I I appreciate you going where you have not gone before and uh, going there with us today. Easy with you, my brother, man. I, was, <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> some people you meet in life and like, I, I like everybody I, really. I, I, I'm a people person. I think people are my last hope. Right. So I like everybody, but some people you just meet and you instantly have a connection, like your family or your friend, you're going to be friends with them. And that's how I feel with you, Dan. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like if me and you lived in the same street, we would always be over hanging out with each other. Constantly. We'd hang out. And, Right. Yes. So I'd wave at the neighbor. I'd be happy with Miss Smith across the street. But me, I'd go over <laughs> and knock on your door. What are you doing, man? Like, I know that that's how we would be. I really have that feeling. I, I really do. Um, so I'm more than happy to come on your show and, and give the dish as much as I can. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll park the conversation here. I mean, because there's look, <laughs> there is a lot more we could talk about. Yes. But friends, not today. I'm going to let Tony get some sleep. And because uh, we are recording late. And so you can get his book anytime series colony cavalier. You know, I, I really, I read this book friends and I said, I think the information is so accurate. I made all my students in the DID coach mentorship training program, read it because it's, I mean, Tony is not lying about the things he's seen and experienced. And so I appreciate you writing that book and I appreciate you as a guest and for your boldness to talk about this stuff that really will malign anyone and, and, and you, you, you're doing it because you want people to know. And, and I appreciate that. So friends until next time, God bless and Godspeed. It's time for the announcements. Hey friends, Dan Duvall here to remind you that the home of Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall is on dandevall.com. This is where you can come to find all of our past podcasts and descriptions, as well as the opportunity to become a podcast patron, where you'll be able to uh, join our online community, access the podcast early, get exclusive discounts on merchandise, which can be found on our merchandise store at dandevall.com. We have all kinds of cool stuff, robes, flip-flops, shirts. Thank you for supporting us. And by the way, there's some great stuff. And you'll even see me at times wearing it on this very podcast. We also have another offering. It's called Overcomer Accelerated. At this opportunity, you'll be able to get coaching, live ministry demonstration as part of group coaching with me personally, a book study, and the entire institute that you can also find at bridemovement.com, but you get access to the whole thing on this platform for one monthly fee, as long as you're part of this program. And, 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 and it's a lot of, I mean, over a hundred hours of, of teaching at your fingertips. You can start quarterly, uh, every every year now, we, we started with our pilot this past fall and starting in January, we'll start the next quarter. You can enroll at the beginning of the quarter and you can stop anytime. And we we, we made this for survivors of, of, of brokenness and trauma backgrounds that wanted to have a learning experience centered around their healing journey. So check it out at overcomeraccelerated.com. Super cool program. And there are different price points which you can come in on. And, and, and you can uh, also check us out at manifest.space, which is our private social network. We uh, love putting people in community. You'll find some exclusive classes here and a lot of people that you can connect with. We'll see you on the other side. You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Those were your announcements. You've been listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Visit me at dandevall.com where you'll discover merch, books, and the opportunity to engage in our private social network. 
Join the tribe by subscribing to our email list and supporting this podcast. 